Okay, I've got a new I've got a new transformer for the um, Zenith radio that I believe the old transformer was bad on. Um, I've just got the transformer. <clears throat> pardon me. Um, just hooked up to voltmeters, and then I've got my jumper um, 110 connector on it. And I've there's two ways this can be hooked up. Um, between the white and the black is 125 volts. Between the white and the gray. Yeah, between the white and the gray is 115 volts. Um, so I'm just, you know, do, doing some checks. And the amperage draw with no load on the, on the, <clears throat> pardon me, on the transformer is 0 .09 at 100, well, I guess 0 .08, 0 .08. And the voltage output is close to 600 with no load and it is a center tap But I've got it on both ends. I've got the center tap um, sitting free here Which is right here. It's not connected to anything The center tap so I just wanted to see the full um, output voltage of the transformer um, This is the 5 volt filament for the um, Rectifier tube and this is the 6.3 for the rest of the tubes and these are unloaded and these cheap voltmeters here these two cheap well actually this this south wire um i've checked it with this meter and this meter and this is um, a little bit over right around five something i just don't trust this this um south wire i just don't like this south wire for some reason if I put it even if I put it into the 600 it's not going to show it's still fluctuating and I don't understand why it does that because it's rock solid when it's hooked to these other two I don't know why the AC is screwed up and I got another south wire that has an amp clamp on it and the AC is it's unreliable the AC voltage reading is unreliable on it I don't know why um, I've got quite a few voltmeters laying around I could have got my fluke out but I didn't and as you can see i believe this is going to work um for the uh, replacement transformer in that radio as the mounting platform is very close it's a little bit skinny in this direction but it's exactly uh, two inches wide which is the other one in this direction so i i can make this work but i was kind of wondering what the voltage difference was on the output um, if we run this down, let's say I do wire it to the 125 and it's on somebody's wiring that's running at 115, let's say. So the output drops 50 volts on the AC and our filament voltage is still above 6.2 unloaded. So I'm assuming this is going to be a little bit lower. These are the two voltages I was worried about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it to the, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, to the 115 volt connection going to the um, primary side of the transformer let's lay this over here let's see if I can just wiggle this around let's see I want to go the outside of that wire there I don't want to disturb these too much as some of them aren't <clears throat> covered and I don't recommend doing this unless you know exactly what you're doing here so like I know exactly what I'm doing so now this should be for 115 volts which I think we have this turned down to 115 none of the wires are touching we're good yeah so we're back up six eight five and that's at 114 so let's say you have 118 at your outlet What's our output up to? So we've gone over 7 on the filament voltage. So I'm just wondering which one I want to wire it to. Let's drop that back down to 100. And, I think to the 120 side. Just to be safe. The voltages are a little bit low, but it might just take a little bit longer for the radio to warm up. 
there should be enough voltage here. The schematic's calling for 220. So when we're at 120 and we're down at 115, we're still about 550 unloaded. So it should have enough voltage. This switches. Yeah. I've had this meter for a very long time. Very long time I've had this meter. I'm trying to think when I bought that was probably 96. Yeah, 96. And I used it at work for many years. The reason why I went to the fluke is because the fluke when you go between continuity and voltage which I had to do at work a lot troubleshooting um, electrical wiring on uh, man lifts cranes boom trucks you know that sort of thing heavy equipment I would forget to move this to the continuity so I would be checking voltage then I wanted to do a continuity check I'd forget to do this then I would be chasing my tail because it's not on continuity even though the the meter is the fluke you don't have to change your leads when you go back between continuity and voltage and that's why I got this this meter this was on my service truck for years and years as a backup to my fluke and this was on the service truck for years and years as well because if I ever had a problem with the charging system or a uh, starter I could just clamp this on here and it goes uh, I think up to over I can't remember what the max amperage is on this but it's pretty high so it, it did everything I needed to do as far as charging systems anyway that's off subject we should don't need to be talking about that so I think I'm gonna wire the transformer turn that off before I touch something while it's hot um, I'll save my batteries Yeah, I don't even know why I keep that meter around. I think the DC is accurate is why I've kept it. And continuity is fairly accurate too. Um, so you can see on this one there's a lot more settings for the, for the DC voltage. And only two settings for the AC voltage. So it really seems as though they really didn't, even though they did sell it at like Home Depot, to be checking AC voltage, it was mainly for... The D, you know, more for the DC and your um, resistance. But they did break it down pretty hard on DC amperage too. But, you know, anyway, I'm not doing a multimeter review, which I probably should. So, like I said, I'm going to wire this, I think, to the 120, the 125, yeah, 125 um, AC voltage legs on this, which will be the black and the white. And the gray wire, I'm not, I'll just probably fold it back. I'll probably just fold this gray wire back and um, put some heat shrink on it so it can't short out and tie it up inside the radio somewhere. And the rest of it seems to be, um, right, you know, right where it needs to be. Um, the only thing, my, my um, hesitation on this was the amperage output and the wattage that it can do. But I think this, um, the model is a, um, it's a Hammond 270DX, and I think it's printed on the top. There, you can get a good look at it there. So that's going to replace a Zenith part number 95297H. So it's a 95297 transformer. Now this baby, when it's not hooked up, we've seen just a few minutes ago, or the last time I had this out and hooked up, the um, amperage of this, the amperage of this, the amperage of this one, the amperage of the old one, the amp draw of this one with no load on it, and the wire's just hanging out in space here, was 0.3, and it was starting to, you know, you've seen it was getting hot. So this one I left on for quite a while and it never got warm. Didn't even didn't even change temperature at all and it was only drawn used it was like 0.7, so 0.8. So there's something definitely shorted out in this. What I can't tell. I've done continuity checks across everything and cross continuity and I, I don't know. I I don't know if I'm gonna hold on to that or not. I might toss it. It's a cool old transformer, but why do I need to keep it? I'm not gonna rewind it. So, 
I'll just have to keep that in mind if I want to keep it or not. Well, I got a new um, dial lens uh, for this radio, for this Zenith. And you can see when you put it in here, because it has a hole for the tuner through this through here you have to have the radio pretty much in here and lined up where it's going to be so um, I don't have this stapled in here I just have it sitting in here so I can move it wherever I need to get it centered so I'm like how am I going to make sure that it's in the right spot right so I'm thinking if I can put some um, maybe some blue tape hoping it doesn't screw up the plastic this stuff is pretty soft it scratches pretty easy this material this is this new lens is made out of but I'm thinking maybe if I put some blue tape I could put a piece of blue tape you know this way and maybe this way this way and this way to hold it in place <clears throat> and then I can pull the radio chassis out and then staple it to the to the inside of the uh, cabinet so I'm thinking this is the way I'm going to have to do it. You can see I can move it where I need it to be for the most part, right? But as soon as I let go, right? And I did make sure the holes were lined up on the bottom. I didn't screw it into place, but I stuck a screwdriver up in there and made sure they're where they need to be. I could leave it like this, and the knob might cover that, which I have not looked at yet. The knob's pretty big, so I could leave it where it's at. So the knob will cover a lot of it. We'll cover the hole. I mean, you'll never know unless you look really super close just the only thing is as you can see you can see here right a little bit of the flat and no flat here and here so I'm I think it'd be better to pull it a little bit and then staple it down. Get it over where it needs to be. Tape it into place right there. Pull the chassis out and tape it and staple it in. Let's give it a try. I still got to clean these knobs up. It won't take but a couple of minutes. Let's see about the tape here. Cut a section of tape. Where's my knife? Where's my knife? There we go. So we probably want it. We want it fairly long. See, that didn't work so great, did it? You big freaking dorkopotamus. Let's get another one.
So I'm hoping this blue tape won't <coughs> won't pull the finish off. The finish is pretty old, you know. But I think it'll be okay. I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. As long as I don't let it sit on here for weeks at a time. I better just make one more just in case. I don't want to go through all of this again. some things here make life a little easier for me I'm gonna have to dig the stapler out I, I put it away a while ago so Chassis to the side. Now we'll be able to staple it into place now. See, I stapled it in there once already like an idiot and didn't do it right. So I'm thinking the thing to do is to staple it in this corner, in this corner, maybe in that corner somehow. think it's ever gonna sit see the gap osis over here I need to think about this because if it doesn't look right on the front side yeah, it looks okay I'd rather it line up fairly good Let's go ahead and staple that into place. I need to get that back. I need to get. A, I need to clean the inside of this yet too. All right, we'll be back once I get it stapled in. Well, I've got the radio um, chassis back into the cabinet. Um, cabinet's been all. Um, I put a nice coat of wax on it. Um, I always say preservation over restoration not trying to restore these radios I just want to re um, preserve them um, this one I had to do a little bit more to I had to replace this dial because the old dial was I mean come on let's face it there's no fix in that that's pretty hashed so that old dial has gone <clears throat> it's back in here um, I got it plugged into the um, to the variac, but I got it cranked up to the right voltage. I'm sure here. We'll turn it on here. I got the powers on, and it's tuned to a radio already to a station no, already. Along the lawn, this is right. You can see support for that particular issue, but when it comes to the pro life side, she does not. She supports abortion. She supports abortion. So that's talk radio. But there are obviously a lot of things play out differently. We'll talk about that next. Sports it's talk. Bob with Michael Bumpus in today on 710 ESPN Seattle. The Mariner. Now if it gets um, 540. 540 is pretty hard to get at my house. So when I get a radio that gets 540, it's pretty good. Seattle. Seattle. 
Bell Sports Station. And treating it like it's not a serious issue. So 770. It's pretty close. Contest against the There's Como 1000. Right on 1000, so. If it gets this Mexican station up here, <coughs> there's a Mexican station up here. No hay avance, no hay crecimiento, no hay movimiento. Y creemos que es. And then there's a station right here at the end of the dial. So this is tone and band. So shortwave now. And I doubt it's gonna pick anything up on the shortwave. I don't just I don't get shortwave here. I don't think there's anything really being broadcasted on shortwave anyway. Other than all the interference in my area. Oh, there's a voice. shortwave here before. So it's skipping. Yeah. So back on the AM band. Participating in COVID-19 testing at school. It's available at no cost. Participate today if your school is offering. So low tone. Restrictions High to tone. normal activities have caused a surge in chronic neck, back, joint, and nerve pain. Chronic pain is a real problem. According to the CDC... So there it is, the Zenith... Um, well, let's take a look at it with the lights off, I guess. See that dial glow. Reducing pain without the use of narcotics or surgery has always been our priority. All of our therapies are non-surgical, FDA-cleared, and narcotic-free, giving our patients an alternative to addictive painkillers and invasive surgery. So the dial's not so bad. I mean, it's the lights at the top. It doesn't light the bottom really well, but you can see it. It's got that warm old radio glow. Frequency, amplitude, and polarity. pretty cool. Our new therapy has been shown to reduce pain, restore strength, and even regenerate damaged nerves. It's performed by medical providers and is covered by most insurance. Well, there it is. It's going to be a gift for a friend of mine. Um, I hope him and his wife enjoy it and uh, and cherish it for uh, many years to come. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below.